let's face it. If you're trying to get a pay-per-view off to a hot start, you're trying to get a pay-per-view off on a really good note, you could do a hell of a lot worse than Seth Rollins defending the IC title against The Miz. That opening match was great. That opening match was awesome. It is so much of what you could ask for out of an opening pay-per-view match for WWE. This match was good enough where you feel like it would have been well-placed opening WrestleMania, let alone a worthless show like Backlash. I mean, it was really, really good. And it's one of those matches that lulls you into the false sense of security thinking, okay, this match is really good. Maybe this show can overwhelm me, surprise me, and actually deliver. Well, Backlash lived up to the name in one sense. Is that after that opening match, the only Backlash occurring was from the fans and the wrestling writers. Pretty much it felt like almost unanimously shitting on this show. This is what happens when you have a pay-per-view just a week after that glorified money-grabbing house show over there in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia called the Greatest Royal Rumble. Clearly, the company cared significantly more about that, and with the amount of money they reportedly got, even if it was half of that amount, that is still a shit ton of money. That's a big four pay-per-view payday for the company. Of course, they're going to care about that event a hell of a lot more than they did this one. They deserve whatever backlash they get for this show, though, because it was one ginormous circle jerk of a waste of fucking time. Most of the matches were boring to flat-out suck fest. Nothing new or interesting or compelling happened. Every finish seemed stupid. There were no title changes. Just everything about this was dumb, dumb, stupid, dumb. Just terrible, like Nia Jax, Alexa Bliss. That match wasn't any damn good. And then afterwards, we got Nia doing this stupid freaking anti-bullying crap. Who gives a crap? Ah, oh, you're bullied. Everybody's bullied. I was bullied. Get the hell over it. Shut up. Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton. Randy Orton making sure that he's boring the brakes off of everybody, just like a good Randall Keith can do. Maybe you have some hopes or expectations for this. You could quickly put them to bed. Then you got Daniel Bryan taking on Big Cass. Like, Big Cass comes back after missing all that time with the knee injury, and he's thrown right into a program with Daniel Bryan. And I'm sitting there wondering before the pay-per-view, is this an indictment on what they actually feel about Daniel Bryan, or is this a statement about how much they're potentially looking to get behind Big Cass? And the answer is, after this match, I don't know what the hell to think. Like, you put Big Cass in this situation just to lose? And no, no, not only that. You're playing up the big versus small stuff. Not only did you put Big Cass in this position, the position to lose, you put him in a position to lose by tapping out to Daniel Bryan. He couldn't have hit Big Cass with a knee. He couldn't have won that way. You couldn't have Big Cass get DQ'd. All these other possible finishes you could have come up with, other than having the ginormous freaking dude tap into the midget almost instantaneously once the s lock got put in. Like, this victory does nothing for Daniel Bryan. And it most certainly does nothing for Big Cass. And that is so much of the problem with this product the way I see it is you do so many of these things and they mean nothing. And I've talked about it, I believe, literally for years. It feels like a broken record at this point. It is all one ginormous waste of freaking time with this company. And if you watch this show, you know what I mean. Like, it was such a waste of time, I almost didn't even bother doing a review of it, and that's why the review is coming up three damn days later. I didn't even have anybody asking me where the hell the Backlash review was, and I did a freaking Backlash preview video. That tells you how inconsequential and insignificant this piece of crap show was. Carmella beating Charlotte Flair. Like, I legit didn't know. Were they just going to have Charlotte win the belt right back, making the whole waiting a long time to cash in mean nothing for Carmella? Were they actually going to have her win? It's whatever. The match was sloppy. It was dull. Charlotte is bocce, but she has to really slow herself down for Carmella. And it's just a dud. Like, again, just a ginormous waste of freaking time. Like, even the segment with Elias and the New Day and everybody coming out, No Way Jose and all this stuff, like, it's fun, 
and still ultimately a waste of time. Like nothing of consequence happens. They should have called this show No Consequences because nothing of any significant consequence happened here. A perfect example of that was your freaking No DQ WWE Championship match that didn't main event. It didn't even go on second to last. It went on third to last. That tells you how little they feel about the SmackDown World Championship and how much they feel about other guys. AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura. Like, maybe this match was starting to get going a little bit. Maybe this is one of Nakamura's better matches in the main roster WWE. That ain't saying a damn thing. But of course, but of course, it still wasn't great. Because, again, it's Nakamura on the main roster. Why would he bother actually having a great match to live up all the massive overhype that so many of you gave him when he came over from freaking New Japan? But did it matter? These guys could have torn down the house for 40 minutes, and it doesn't matter. Because as so often the case, it comes down to the finish. In this case, the dumb dick finish that the WWE put out there. No wonder people are talking about hashtag fire road dog. You could say it's his fault, it's not his fault. doesn't even matter at this point. You have a no DQ match and in a no contest after double nut crunchers. After double low blows. That's how you win this match? That's the way you end it. Like you do all this with the Nakamura nut cruncher. Just so that way AJ Styles can do it. Just so that way they can both hit each other at the same time. Just so that way they can both get fucking counted out for the count of ten and it's a no contest. No wonder this didn't main event. And no matter, wonder why so many people thought this was a stupid ass show. Because you're hurting the fans feelings and you're pissing them off. Because you are wasting their freaking time. Oh, and by the way, you got shit like this, and it's a meaningless show, yet the WWE still can't manage their time well enough to get it all done within three fucking hours. Fuck you, WWE! And we still had two matches left after this one. Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley taking on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Why do we have this? Because of crap that happened on Raw six days before. Not really a good enough reason to have this match. Of course, the WWE brings back Lashley the night after WrestleMania, and they've done a terrible job with them because that's what the WWE does. You can often say hashtag WWE ruins everything. Like, this show was so bad and so boring for so many people, and the fans cared so little about this particular match, that even when Braun Strowman gets his stuff in, the crowd's kind of like, eh, eh. And that should be something that should be blowing the roof off the place. But they didn't care. If you don't give the people reason to care, they're not going to. And by God, the WWE did plenty on Sunday night with this crap show to not give you anything to care about. Oh, but then we get to the a real main event where the company really cared about. You know, it's bad enough when you're trying to go down the sympathetic, pathetic type of road with Roman Reigns. It just doesn't work. If you're going to force him down people's throats, it is better off as a badass. It's just that simple. And clearly, the shit you're doing doesn't work with him. So, of course, the weak odds in WWE don't care. They're going to do what they want anyways. But now you've got Roman's character bitching about conspiracies and this and that. And you're main eventing the freaking pay-per-view over the WWE Champion. And the WWE Championship, no disqualification match. Not only was it a world title match, it was the WWE title match. And it was a match with a special stipulation. But here's Roman Reigns, freaking, who was so concerned about Lester on the road to Mania. And after, up to and including the greatest Royal Rumble. Now all of a sudden, it's we throw in fucking him and Samoa Joe. And that match deserves a main event. And then, of course, Roman Reigns has got to win this freaking match. And you wonder why people don't fucking like him. Like Joe's on fire as a character. Joe's on fire with his mic work. Just phenomenal stuff. So, of course, he's jobbing out to Roman Reigns. The whole notion of Roman being oppressed in this conspiracy, it's all stupid. And this whole thing is stupid. You know it's stupid when fans are leaving during the main event. You know it's fucking terrible 
when it's Samoa Joe in the match and the fans are still chanting CM Punk and all this other crap because they hate what you're doing with Roman Reigns and they despise the fact that you insisted on main inventing this and they really hate the fact that you had Roman Reigns win. You just can't help yourselves. Yeah, I mean, this show was called Backlash for a reason because apparently the company was anticipating getting a lot, a lot of backlash for it. I'm stumbling over my words right now. It doesn't matter. And they deserve every bit of the backlash they get. Oh, this is a great show. This is a great show. Great. Glad you enjoyed it. Keep it to yourself. We can admit when shows are trash. Backlash was trash. Not surprising, but still trash.